Today, I thought it would be fun to try this new drink. Mmm, that is really sweet. Have you ever stopped to wonder why we say things like this? How is our brain able to recognize something as being really sweet? Or being sweet at all? In order to answer these questions, we have to look inside our body at the biological processes in action. Today, we are going to look at the transduction of sweet taste. First, we need to define a term called cell signaling. Think of how as humans, we need to communicate with one another. Much like us, cells need a method of communication, especially when there are changes in their environment. Because they can't talk to one another, they must communicate another way. This is what scientists refer to as cell signaling. Cells can participate in inter or intracellular signaling. Inter meaning between. Bacteria cells that utilize quorum sensing to become bioluminescent use intercellular communication. When they sense each other's closeness, they can communicate and will all glow together. To look at sweet taste, we will dive into intracellular signaling within one of our taste cells. Let's start when the sugar enters our mouth. Our tongue is covered in a bunch of tiny little bumps called papillae. There are grooves surrounding the papillae that contain taste buds, and each taste bud contains taste chemoreceptor cells. Inside these cells are where the real magic happens. Here is a taste chemoreceptor cell, where the three-step signal transduction pathway begins. The first step is called reception. In reception, a ligand binds to a receptor. The ligand here is a sugar carbohydrate from the sweet drink that I consumed. When the sugar binds to a receptor that matches its shape on the surface of the cell, a signal is produced. Now, the lengthier transduction can occur. Immediately after the ligand binds, a small subunit releases from the receptor and makes its way over to an enzyme called adenylyl cyclase. Adenylyl cyclase will then convert ATP to CANP. There are already potassium ions inside the cell, but because there is now a high concentration of CAMP, the potassium ions are inhibited or blocked from leaving the cell. This blockage causes what is known as depolarization. There is now plenty of positive charge inside the cell, so the charge-dependent calcium ion channel can open up, and calcium ions flood the cell. The ions act like an escort for these little bubbles, called vesicles, filled with tiny messengers called neurotransmitters. They are brought to the cell membrane and released across the synapse between the taste cell and a nearby nerve cell. The neurotransmitters then bind to a receptor on the gustatory nerve cell before the final step. The final step is the response. Because the neurotransmitters were able to bind to receptors on the gustatory nerve cell, a message is sent through nerve fibers up to the brain, letting the person know, hey, I'm eating something sweet right now. And that's it. Now we know that transduction is just a fancy word for turning a signal into a series of processes inside a cell. It may seem like a really lengthy process, but all of this happens in a matter of milliseconds, allowing your brain to almost immediately recognize sweet taste. We can thank the transduction of sweet taste and cell signaling for our enjoyment of sweet treats.